And the games continue this weekend. The final, though, is played on Sunday, but none of the teams are going to know if they qualify until just a couple of weeks before the 2012 games start. It's like watching yourself play, really, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> anyway, let's get some, uh, some final thoughts moving Moving on shortly, uh, or sweetly and swiftly. Um, number of viewers writing in, well, asking about the ECB, asking about, about bubbles as well. We have um, Ninja Investment writing in saying, uh, this mega Eurobond idea popped up a couple of times, bit retrospective, but wouldn't it have saved the Eurozone from the start? It's an interesting, it's an interesting point of view. And actually, um, Triche, he was speaking, I think it was at the LSE a few months back, and he said categorically it was never an option and never will be an option. And it won't solve two problems. I mean, the main problem with Europe is that it's two-tier. So if you look at the periphery, it wouldn't help re um, help them regain their competitiveness. Mm -hmm. And for example, in countries like Spain, it wouldn't help their labour reforms. And you'll, you need higher higher employment levels. Um, he goes on to say he or, or she. Um, uh Nino investment, I guess it could be a, a woman. Uh, it will give the Japanese something to put their money into and would have kept yields low for, for governments. And of course, there's also speculation that, uh, that we might be looking at a shift in terms of where the, the Asian players, the yeah. Asian holders of European and US mm. uh, where they're going to go. Where they're gonna go. Yeah. Exactly. But the problem is there's such a lack of alternatives because that's, that was everyone's big fear over the downgrade of the US, uh, of US debt, that obviously China would pull their money because they're so overexposed. And they, there was a call for another global global reserve currency and for other opportunities. But there is this lack, uh, especially of a market that's as liquid. Yeah. Do you think, Gemma, that, that now is the time to go in and try to buy what looks to be equities that are quite good value at the moment? Or do you think you wait it out a bit? Uh, it, it's always good to be opportunistic and look at buying opportunities, but I would, I would um, temper this. Uh, there was an interesting article and it said that on Wednesday, I think, the best performing European stock was the um, National Bank of Greece. So I think people are potentially going too far down the risk curve in that respect to get opportunities. I think if you go and you find good, good, um, good companies that have solid balance sheets that are in a very strong position, then over the longer term, they'll be adding value. Mm. Do you think that we're heading towards another leg of the recession? These are, are very basic questions. I mean, I, this is 101 basic questioning of, you know, is it going to get worse again? Are we going to have to go through what we've just been through and, and potentially even worse because we're now in a, in a no growth or low growth environment, not just one place globally or two places geographically, but, but it seems that Asia, US and Europe, we're all, we're all in it. Mm. I'd say the risk was actually higher a few months back. Uh, my main concern was over stagflation, and I was concerned that a lot of the governments were going to raise rates too quickly to protect their credibility because they'd kept rates on hold for so long. Mm. And the growth, obviously, the growth numbers are very weak. But what you're seeing now are governments actually realizing that this is the case. And if they keep rates on hold for longer, that should hopefully help. We will be in a low growth environment, but I don't equate um, economic growth to market returns. Mm. No. I mean, I guess we, we have seen a kind of a complete separation of the two mm. a while back, actually. Yeah. Uh, um, gold, just because we've seen such a huge yeah. move in gold this week. I mean, yeah. are, are, you, are you of the believer that gold is going to continue up regardless of what happens, or does gold have to level off at some point as well? I'm getting a bit cautious about gold because obviously it's looked at as a safe haven but we saw a 60% rise in the volatility of gold. So that potentially could spook some investors that are going there because they don't want the volatility. Um, so I, I would kind of be a bit concerned on gold. Okay. Um, we have uh, Talus 622 he writes in and he says, um, it's worth thinking about if markets go south after QE3 uh, versus going north. I mean, is, if we were to see more stimulus put into the market, is it necessarily a given mm. that the markets would take it as being good news or could it be seen as being, you know, bad news because mm. the pol politicians or, you know, our leaders think that we're, we're so bad off that they need to put yeah. in more stimulus. No, exactly. It's definitely a short-term, again, it's a short-term solution. And uh, investors are very wary now about um, the, these type of reactions because they don't tend to create jobs. And you need to see an economic recovery. You need to see growth, growth figures come back. And stimulus, as we've seen, it hasn't really provided these solutions. 
Uh, Gemma, thank you very much for being with us today. I know you tweet as well, so what's your Twitter handle? GC Godfrey. GC Godfrey, good. So you can find Gemma, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, we're happily uh, taking your comments and your questions still. Thank you so much for watching. Gemma Godfrey, head of uh, research at Credo Capital. We have an emergency cabinet meeting coming up in Italy tonight. That should be interesting, and uh, we'll be uh, fully all over that on Monday morning, I'm sure. That's it for Closing Bell, though. Up next, the strategy session. Have a lovely weekend, and I'll see you uh, same time, same place on Monday. Goodbye for now.